Hi everybody, this is Craig Tanner for The Mindful Eye and The Daily Critique. Today's image was submitted by Absol, who is an advanced photographer from the UK. Absol says this is a young girl in Multan City in Pakistan, and she was taking a break from work, and he took this picture, shot this with a Nikon D70, not sure of the other metadata here. Um, one of the things I personally find very powerful about this portrait right away is the gesture and the expression. Um, I get a sense of a confrontation or a wariness. Um, it's a little bit of an in-between expression which um, leaves it open to projections or interpretations of the viewer and I think that's powerful. But uh, when you combine the, uh, the expression with the head being pretty much straight up and down and looking right at us and then the hands uh, being sort of folded and in front of uh, the heart, um, both of those gestures taken together are pretty guarded, pretty powerful combination of ideas in terms of body language and expression, gesture. I think that's very powerful here. Um, the other thing that I like about this portrait is the closeness of it. Absol's had the courage to come in um, and get very close, which makes the, uh, the energy of the body language and all that a lot more palpable and a lot more powerful here. And I think black and white is a beautiful choice here. Uh, one of the things that it's really doing for me in the composition uh, is it's it's making number one um, expression and gesture even more powerful. Colors come with their own emotions and they can really sort of get in the way of the energy of body language and gesture and expression. And the other thing that it's doing is uh, is creating a very powerful rhyme or rhythm between this pattern um, on what this uh, girl is wearing, which is sort of appearing throughout. Uh, and then happening in, in a bigger way it was sort of light and dark and light and dark. Um, it's happening down here too with the pattern of the wall that she's sitting in front of in the background. And I really like this in the image. Um, it's a really beautiful counterpoint um, to the little girl. It's to me another character in the story. Um, th there's a, a rhythm in terms of just the, the form and, and the texture in here that rhymes with the clothes. There's an overall shape that rhymes. The little girl herself, uh, real powerful, just this shape at the top and just this idea of the different parts of this and the layout of it relative to the idea of the little girl. And it also, for me as the viewer, creates another level of story. I just uh, wonder uh, what is in the back. How is How does this connect to her? Does it connect to her visually? Definitely does with the energy moving in this direction. Love that part um, of the image. When I look at an image like this, I almost always immediately, if it starts out in black and white, to think about variations. Um, and to me, sort of altering things in a black and white shot, number one, it's easier because you don't have to worry about colors being mutually dependent on each other. And black and white is, is already abstract. And so much of the time, once I start thinking in black and white, I start to give myself a lot more creative leeway in terms of changing things. So um, I like this shot a lot just the way that it is. I wanted to give another version to sort of make her come out from the wall a little bit, make her more of a main subject. And then I just wanted to talk about a couple of things relative uh, to editing images. One of the things that I wanted to talk about, just want to mention right away here, whenever I'm looking at a black and white image so much of the time, what I'll do right away is um, is go into curves, and in this case this is a grayscaled image already, so everything's sort of backwards relative to color. Up is down, and down is up in terms of making things lighter and darker. But I'll go into curves, and I'll and I'll just play around with the curve in a real dramatic way um, to let myself see what happens in the image as contrast changes. For instance, we might just do something very very wild like this to flatten the curve way out, and uh, start to look at. Uh, some possibilities if the tone uh, in different parts of the image and value uh, starts to change. Uh, what would make, um, this is a very radical example of, of uh, contrast flattening out big time, almost sort of a posterized look, but what happens in this image if things do flatten out? Does the, the girl, as the subject come forward? What if we go in the other direction? Um, what does that do for the image? Is it making the girl come forward? Is it making the wall more powerful? So on and so forth. And by doing very, very sort of wacky, out of control things um, in curves, um, instead of just trying to correct something in a subtle way, it can start to give us ideas about where we might go with the image. You know, and it's funny just playing around right here. I could stop right here if we were open to having um, a, a posterized sort of graphic interpretation of this image and I would like it quite a bit. Um, when 
I did play around in curves uh, what I did find uh, to be true for myself in terms of working on this image, and let's just throw this away, is that I did want to flatten that background out a little bit and bring the girl forward. And so I just want to show you the work that I did in a very rough way and then talk about one other thing in terms of editing. Um, copied my background to pretend I have good workflow and know what I'm doing in Photoshop. Um, I came in and I did uh, create a curves layer that was much flatter and I applied that locally uh, to the wall and uh, and so that's that change right there and I've, again I've done this in a pretty rough way I'm just sort of playing here today and not trying to finish this in a perfect way I came in on a blank layer and playing it painted with black and overlay mode to make that background go darker again I know this is uh, very rough and very blunt then I came in with a levels adjustment to create a little bit of a lighting effect on the face and then I came in with levels to add more contrast back into that very flat background. And a lot of times, uh, you know, here's, here's what we've done uh, so far. And it's rough. I've done it pretty fast. But a lot of times I'll play like this pretty fast. And then what I might do from here is save all these layers and essentially... Uh, just flatten this on the top layers. I've just done a command shift E with the eyeballs that are on and now everything is on this one layer. I might from here play around with opacity um, a little bit um, and we can just turn this on and off to see what that's doing relative to where we started and then if I find a pretty good blend with the work that I've done a lot of times what I would do from here is essentially start from here now start over and let myself edit on this version and sort of act as if this is the, uh, the first version one of the things that I find to be true uh, for people that are editing in Photoshop when I watch them on workshops and stuff is let's say that they're open to making a big radical change to an image like this um, if you don't get the original idea sort of off your plate, save it off and get it out of there and then and come up with a new starting point and you keep going back to where you started, it can be very inhibiting in terms of letting you make the changes. And with this being a black and white file, if I had gone a little bit slower in terms of the work that I did before, we could have created these different effects and have the transitions and the way that we applied them uh, locally uh, to be very seamless if I'd taken a little bit more time on the mask and then um, how much I'm willing to change this from that point forward so much of the time is if we're, we're doing pretty good work in Photoshop is not governed so much by what's believable because again this is in black and white and it's abstract to begin with it's being more governed by what we'll let ourselves do in the context of editing and a long time ago when I used to uh, you know, um, hand print all my work, my black and white and color work back in the analog days. Um, somebody really helped me a lot with my printing and they said, you know, Craig, get your originals away. Get a good work print and then work from there. And uh, forget about your original transparency. Um, it'll be very inhibiting if you keep going back to that and it'll also drive you crazy. And uh, so hopefully um, a couple of these ideas uh, today uh, could be helpful. The idea of going into curves and black and white and really just playing in there and looking at relationships in the image overall and maybe getting some ideas about editing an alternate version of an image. Maybe it already works for you, but just giving yourself some ideas uh, by looking at the image through a real sort of extreme filter of high contrast or low contrast, so on and so forth, might teach you something too about playing in curves, which is a very powerful but very complicated dialog box. And then just this idea of maybe saving off your layers and a version and getting to a new place and letting that almost be sort of a work print. And then you start to add to that and work on the layers of that. And, you know, I've talked about this before, the sort of final idea relative to this idea of editing over time is uh, working on things and then putting them away uh, for a day or two, three, and then uh, coming back to them. Um, love this image for all the reasons that I mentioned. It's just a very, very close portrait. Uh, very powerful gesture and expression. Love the rhythms uh, that are happening with the texture in the wall and the patterns in the clothes. I want to say a big thank you to Afsal for sharing this image with us on the Mindful Eyes Daily Critique.